There's a passage toward the beginning of this week's Torah portion that seems harmless and purely informational. It's discussing the twins, Jacob, Yaakov, and his brother, Esau. The passage states that, And the lads grew up, and Esau became a skilled hunter, a man of the field. And Yaakov was a man without fault, living in tents. But one of the commentators says that that passage is actually an implied rebuke of the parents of those twins, Isaac and Rebekah. Yitzchak and Rivka. Why? Because until those boys were teenagers, their parents had them in the same school, the same yeshiva, the same classroom, but the same rabbi. And for Yaakov, that was fantastic. Each day was another one of spiritual growth as he formed the building blocks for his later life as a spiritual giant on earth, one of the patriarchs, learning to live a driven life of singular purpose. But for his twin brother, Esau, it was torture, sitting there every day in yeshiva, bored out of his mind. And that's why he became such a skilled hunter. Because to be good at hunting, you've got to be patient. You've got to conceal your true intentions. You've got to sit and wait until it's time to finally pounce on your prey. And so he sat there, looking at the clock, waiting for those days and weeks and months and years to pass until he reached his teenage years and he could rebel. As the father of twin boys, I can tell you, they're inseparable, but they are different. Are you guys twins? Yes. Are you exactly the same or are you different? No, different. How are you different? Because he's stronger than me. Yeah, how else? Because he's speedier than me. What are your favorite sports? Do you have the same favorite sport or different ones? Yes. Football. You like football? What do you like? Uh, ice hockey. And so according to this commentator, Yitzchak and Rivka painfully violated the cardinal rule of parenting, Hanoch Lenar Alpidarko, educate each child according to his or her way. And if you need proof as to just how much potential Esav had that was squandered, you need look no further than later on in this week's Torah portion, when Yitzchak, his father, is planning to give him the blessing until his wife Rivka intercedes and convinces his younger brother, Yaakov, to impersonate Esav in order to get the blessing. Why was Yitzchak planning to give this special blessing to Esav? One commentator suggests because he realized that Esav had the potential to be a spiritual adventurer. He could take those social skills, that fearlessness, and go to places and introduce Judaism in areas in which Yaakov would be uncomfortable to enter. Bars, clubs, ultra lounges, corporate boardrooms, luxury suites at sporting events. Asav, had he been educated properly, could have really been somebody. I could have been a contender. I could have been somebody instead of a bum, which is what I am. And that's a lesson to all of us as parents, to make sure to educate each one of our children properly, not to try to force a round peg into a square hole to make sure that each of our children is able to fulfill his or her potential religiously, spiritually, financially, finding the right path and the right job and the right course of study for each of those kids. And it's a message for each of us. If you're sitting and listening to your rabbi's lecture or in your study session, looking at your watch or at the clock, waiting for the time to go to ends so you can get out of there, then you've unfortunately got a problem. You've got to find a new rabbi or a new study session or a new partner or some other way to maximize that time to improve and make sure you're on a path of spiritual growth. Life is too short to squander those precious moments.